Namaste. Welcome to the next episode of Yoga Vasishta. Today we're going to kick off Book 2, Chapter 1. So you should read the whole thing in the download because I'm just going to pick a few essential verses to discuss in this video. So you have to read the whole thing yourself so you got the context. So please download the PDF file. It's given in the video description. After Rama delivered his speech before the assembly, sage Vishvamitra, who sat before Rama, tenderly said, Rama, you are the best of the most intelligent, and you have nothing more to learn that you have not already come to know by your own observation. You have an understanding clear like a mirror, and your questions serve to polish and reflect your understanding to others. You have a mind like that of Shuka, the son of the great Vyasa, who, knowing the knowable by intuition, was yet in need of some teaching to confirm his belief. Rama said, How was it that Shuka, son of the great Vyasa, did not at first rest assured of his knowledge of the knowable, but then came to be settled in his belief. So this is a great question. Huh? It's a, a great question and a great response by uh, Vishvamitra to Rama's speech. First of all, he tells Rama, you have nothing more to learn. This means that the actual teaching, the esoteric teaching, is not a lot of information. It doesn't require a tremendous amount of book learning. Because the things that Rama spoke about are easily observable in life by any intelligent person. The problem is, and the reason why most people don't get it, is they have prior beliefs about the world that do not allow them to see the reality. They're thinking, oh, this world is a nice place and I can enjoy here. No, <laughs> this world is not a nice place and you can't enjoy or any tiny little bit of enjoyment there is, is certainly more than counteracted by the suffering of material existence. So this suffering is going on, whether you're in a high position or a low position. It just comes about by means of the mechanism of the material world. Everyone has to get old, get diseased, and die. Things that come in our life also go. Because everything is temporary. Everything is limited by time. That means nothing can be enjoyed forever. There's always a limit. And that will take away from us all the things we care about. And th therefore, the more we care about the world, the more we're going to suffer. We made this point all the way back in the very first video series on being in the world. That the source of all our suffering is caring about the world, caring about what people think, caring about how much money I'm going to make, caring about my social position, caring about this and that and the other thing. Because of that care, when the world changes, we feel affected by it. And of course, there's also caring about our own body, our mind, huh? so many things. But we don't realize that none of these things in the world are actually our self. So really, the only thing we need to know about the world, including our body and mind and so many other things, is that it's not ours and certainly is not 
I, myself. Myself is only consciousness. And consciousness is not an I. <laughs> consciousness is a nothingness, an emptiness, a space where things show up, like a mirror. And consciousness reflects everything around it, just like a perfect mirror, unless it's blocked by set beliefs in the mind. So where people go wrong and they lose their intelligence is they become identified with the body and mind. And they start to consider the condition of the body and mind or the world to be their condition. Huh? Just like on the news, you read of so many problems every day. Well, of course, they're trying to sell views in advertising huh? or even maybe physical newspapers and so on. So they have to make a big drama out of everything. Make it look like a big conflict, worse than it really is. Because actually, if you analyze, all the things on the news have nothing to do with you. You meaning the consciousness. <laughs> that they're simply like a, like a picture show, like a movie or a video, even maybe literally a video, huh? Flashing before your eyes. And then it's gone, it's over. And it's like it never happened. Most of the time, things that happen on the news have no effect on us whatsoever. So why do we get all worked up about it? Because of identification. If we let go of this identification, then even when somebody does or says something negative towards us, it doesn't affect us. Because, hey, I'm not this body, I'm not this mind, I'm not this identity, Mr. So-and-so. Huh? I'm not this position in the world. Huh? I'm not the owner of this house or the resident at this address. I'm simply the consciousness that watches it all go by like a movie. And when it's over, it's over. That's all. The lights come on and the screen is revealed to be nothing but a white wall. Shukadev, now tell me truly, O long-armed prince, so that you may set my mind at rest from its wandering all about the world. What do you think this world to be? Janaka replied, there is nothing more certain, O sage, than what you know by yourself and have heard from your father. There is but one undivided intelligent spirit known as the universal soul and nothing else. It becomes confined by its desires, vasana, and becomes freed by its lack of them. You have truly come to the knowledge of the knowable, whereby your great soul has desisted from attachment to objects of enjoyment and vision. You must be a hero to have overcome your desires for the lengthening chain of attractive enjoyments while still in your early youth. What more do you want to hear? So, I hope you've read the story because we just skipped over a whole bunch of, uh, of narrative. But here is the punchline. Shukadev asks Janaka, so what is this world anyway? Uh, set my mind at rest. My mind is wandering, going here and there. It's always in motion. It's always in change. Set it at rest so that it doesn't need to change or move anymore. So Janaka replies with, again, the core teaching of this book, this Yoga Vashishta, that there is but one undivided intelligent spirit known as the universal soul and nothing else. What appears to be separate or distinct from that soul, that one, that Brahman, that one consciousness, self-aware, 
and satisfied, motionless, and without time, is only illusion. Just like we were talking a minute ago about the picture show, the cinema, the movie, the video. And as soon as the video is over, then there's nothing left but the blank screen of pure consciousness, aware of itself. Ramana Maharshi calls this I, I. And this is the real object of meditation. This is the real symptom of self-realization. Janaka continued, you have obtained whatever is obtainable by the comprehension of your mind. You take no interest in the outer and visible world, so you are liberated from it and have nothing to doubt. Being thus advised by the magnanimous Janaka, Shuka remained silent with his mind fixed in the purely supreme object. Being devoid of sorrow and fear, and released from all efforts, exertions, and doubts, he went to a peaceful summit of Mount Meru to obtain his final absorption. There he passed 10,000 years in a state of unalterable meditation, until at last he broke his mortal coil and was extinguished in the supreme soul like a lamp without oil. Thus purified from the stain of rebirth by abstention from earthly desires, the great soul Shuka sank into the holy state of the Supreme Spirit, Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Just like a drop of water merges into the depth of the ocean. So this is the criterion. Just like Rama, having seen the futility of material existence, still felt he needed instruction to be at peace. So also Shukadev, even though being instructed by his great father, Vyasa, and meditating for many years, and attaining enlightenment, actually, still had some doubts. And these doubts need to be put to rest by someone with authority, a realized soul, well, it's very difficult to find a realized soul, especially today. Uh, in olden times, or even up to very recently, it was clear that there were several realized souls on the, on the earth. But these days, they seem to have all disappeared. And we sense a tremendous crisis in the world coming because of the lack of proper guidance. So people are becoming atheistic, they're becoming amoral, they're becoming materialistic, they're becoming so ignorant that even though they may have great intelligence, they completely miss the point of life. So we are simply reminding people uh, that this self-realization means the end of suffering. And so if you have simply viewed the world and life from the correct viewpoint, then you will know the end of suffering for yourself as well. And this is enlightenment. This is self-realization. And slowly that will develop into samadhi. Nirvikalpa samadhi means there are no thoughts in the mind. The mind is absolutely still and quiet. There are no desires. There is no I, no personality, no self in the sense of an ego. Huh? There is only the unbounded consciousness of the absolute. And that is the pinnacle of self-realization. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Harihi Aum. Karunar Navamai Kardakadinalgum Aruna Chalashivam Yidam